gynecology uh, is one of the most uh, complete and reliable source of information on current developments in women's health care. Uh, what are the major editorial challenges that you or your team face and how do you maintain high standards of publication? Uh, that's a great question. I think one of the challenges is actually keeping up with standards and uh, things that are changing because STM as a field is something that's been evolving pretty rapidly over the last 10 years. So um, just finding the time to keep up to date um, and that's a big part of my job. Um, keep up to date with what's going on and what's new in the field is it can be very challenging because you're also at the same time trying to make sure you're getting out this journal on a monthly basis on time. Um, so there, there can be it's quite a balancing act sometimes. Other challenges that we face, uh, which I think a lot of people face in their uh, jobs, is just the pace of communication is so different now with email and being able to be. Um, in contact with people all the time, I think that can be challenging as well because there is sometimes an expectation that because it's email, it's something that you have to respond to right away, but sometimes it's just not possible. For So for me personally, um, I think the whole email communication thing and just managing that and prioritizing that can be a personal challenge for myself uh, oftentimes. Other challenges we have from the, per from the editorial perspective is finding good peer reviewers. And peer review is an activity that is not paid. And um, we are very grateful to all of our peer reviewers for what they do for us because they're really ensuring that what we're publishing is, has gone through a rigorous test of sorts. Um, but again, they're not paid. So we, we monitor peer reviews very carefully. We're careful not to assign things to s someone uh, too many times, too often, for instance, we try to give give them at least two months between uh, each assignment, for instance. But also we just want to make sure that we're bringing in new peer reviewers. So that's one thing we've been working on, for instance, this year is uh, reaching out to different societies, perhaps in different subspecialty areas that maybe not have a, they may be not, they may not have a great representation. Um, among our reviewer pool and we've been reaching out to them to invite people to sign up to be a peer reviewer um, and uh, that's got that's a we've gotten a nice response to that so I think finding good peer reviewers and uh, making sure you have a good balance is is, is a challenge um, and then once we get those peer reviewers what we've done is um, categorize them as a new peer reviewer so they're sort of in a separate category and what we do is give them an opportunity to complete four to five reviews. And then our editor-in-chief um, runs a report and she takes a look at those new reviewers and those people who have high scores and who have turned things around quickly, um, they'll move on to our general reviewer pool. Um, those people who might be on the fence, she might reach out to with a personal communication and give them some tips on what they might change. And then there's those that we might just remove from our, our pool altogether. So there is sort of this um, vetting process that we've put into place. Our new editor, our newish editor, our editor in chief who started in 2013, she put this into place. And I think it's a great, it's, it's worked very well. So finding peer reviewers can be uh, one of our biggest challenges.